quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells? And pretty maids all in a row? I bet yeah. you don't even know what those things are, do you, Watson? Nah, sure <laughs> welcome, don't. Welcome to Give Science a Hand. Hi. Watson, what were you talking about? Mary, Mary, quite contrary. Well, What's gonna, all that about? We're going to go to the nursery today, and That's I right. just thought it might be appropriate. Well, that was absolutely uh, yeah. right, because we're going to the Benke's Nursery. We're going to see our friend Karen Upton, yeah. and we're going to find out how to make your garden grow. Good. That's the title of today's program. Well, I got my green thumb ready. Your green thumb. Yeah. If I remember correctly, that green thumb failed you in the past. Well, I get to try again, don't yeah, I? Yeah, let's turn Watson and you into a gardener. It's gardening time again. If you want to see some flowers sprout this season, if you want to grow your own vegetables, we're appealing to Watson's better sense here. He's uh -huh. always interested in food. How do you go about it? What kind of seeds do you pick out? What kind of soil do you use? What kind of fertilizer? How often to water? All those questions. Well, on today's program, we're going to turn you into an amateur gardener who will make sure you get some flowers and vegetables this season. Good. Okay, Watson? Yeah. Before we get on and see Karen and go to the nursery, okay. let me suggest to you a couple things you can do at home, a couple experiments. Now, one thing you might want to do is to take some seeds, any kind of seeds, but I recommend you use radish seeds. Do you like radishes, Watson? Yeah, I like radishes. Radishes, yeah. They're good in salads. They're good to eat by themselves. But radish seeds germinate. They grow. They start to grow very quickly. Oh. So that's the advantage. Get some small dishes. Okay. I have two small dishes right here. You can use these. Line them with a paper towel, kind of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting with paper towel on the inside. Gee, that's neat. Add a small amount of water. And now you have a test dish and a control dish. You got that, Watson? Yep. And you want to put a few seeds. I'm using bean seeds here. Oh. Put a few seeds into each one. Use the seeds from the same container. Uh -huh. Cover them up. Tape the container shut so that the water and the mist is trapped inside. And then overnight, as they swell up and they begin to germinate, you'll be able to see differences in the seeds if you vary the conditions. Now, Watson might be saying, and you might be saying, no, wait a minute. Mr. G just said, Mr. Z just said, same seeds, same dishes, same amount of water. That's true, but maybe you'll put one in the light and one in the dark. Oh, okay, that'd be different. That would be different. Yeah. Maybe put one in the hot area of the house, uh -huh. one in the cold area of the house. Oh. Change one condition, change one variable. Yeah, see what it does. That's right, to yeah. see if those conditions affect the way those seeds grow. Will it? Well, I don't want to give away the answer, but if you try it, you're going to see some differences depending on the variable you choose. Okay. So you've got bean seeds. I suggest you use radish seeds. We have some grass seeds here. Yeah. All right. You also have some soybean seeds. Any kind of seeds at all will work in this particular experiment. In fact, there is a great experiment going on right now up there in the heavens, Watson. Oh, yeah? In fact, if you look at the screen there, look at that poster. That was one that NASA put out when they sent over 10 million tomato seeds into outer space. Gee, what happened to the tomato seeds? <laughs> Those tomato seeds are still up there. That was called the seeds experiment. Uh -huh. Space exposed experiment developed for students. And those tomato seeds someday will be brought back down. Uh -huh. They've been in space, space for a couple of years. They've been exposed to the radiation of space, the high temperatures of space, and they'll be distributed to students all across the country to see whether or not the tomato seeds grow better or worse than the ones that stay down here on Earth. Or maybe not at all. Or maybe not at all. Yeah. And to make that work, since NASA is a good scientist itself, they had some control seeds that didn't go into space, some that went into space were exactly the same way so that we can make some comparisons. Oh, gee. Easy thing to do. Uh -huh. So get yourself some seeds, set them up in different conditions, and then try this. Okay. Take an index card. This is a three by five card. Yep. And you want to dip one end of it into iodine, mm -hmm. like you would use on a cut, on a sore. You're going to see that the end of that card, since it contains starch, turns, what color is that, Watson? Gee, it looks sort of brownish black. Yeah, it's a brownish black color because that's what iodine does when it hits paper. And paper, of course, comes from trees. Trees have starch in. Then you'll notice that I've written something on the card here. Watson, help me out. Okay. This says seed coat. This says bean water. water. Uh -huh. This says a piece of the big word that's cotyledon. Gee, I've never because seen that if, word before. No, that's a new word. It's a tough one to say. What you want to do is you want to take one of your bean seeds that's been soaking, squeeze it mm -hmm. so that the seed coat comes off, and the two halves of the seed are called the cotyledon. Take a piece of the seed coat and touch it and push it onto the card here. 
going to be like a collage you make. Take a drop of the bean water, put it next to where you've written bean water. Mm -hmm. Take a piece of the cotyledon, piece of the little embryo, the little plant that starts to grow, right. and a drop of plain water for a control. Uh -huh. And you know what's going to happen? Can Gee. I give, should I give away the secret, Watson? Well, if you want to. Yeah, I'll give them a hint. Okay. Any part of the bean that contains a special substance called an enzyme that changes starch into sugar is going to cause a white spot to appear on your card. Oh, gee. To show that the starch has disappeared. Uh-huh. So when you plant your seeds, you really don't have to put them in the light because they don't need light until they put out their first leaves. And Karen's going to tell us that the plants survive because they've got a little care package here in the, what's that word again, Watson? Cotta, cotyledon. The cotyledon. Uh, cotyledon. Yeah, is that's that right? A, that's, a, that's the word. That's a Thank tough you. one to say. That's where the food is stored. That's the care package for the seed. Okay. You got it? Yeah. So try your card, try your seeds in different conditions, and then put on your, uh, put on your boots, get your hoe. Watson's going to put on his dungarees. We're yep. headed down to the nursery. We're going to get uh, down into the dirt and plant some seeds, all right? Yeah, let's go see Karen. <laughs> okay, stay with us. The Science Bowl, elementary and middle school editions, only here on Channel 12. We're down here at Benke's Nursery in Largo, Maryland, and this is our friend Karen Upton, who's Hi. been a guest on our program many times. Karen, I feel like we're in that picture, American Gothic, you know that painting? <laughs> oh yeah, it probably was warmer then, though. <laughs> we're down here today to give you some ideas about how to get your garden started for the summer. Now, if you're the kind of student that always wanted to eat the vegetables you yourself grew in your backyard, this is your chance to find out the things that you want to do to ensure that salad this summer. Karen's also going to tell us about putting some flowers in your garden. So to get started here, Karen, uh, what are some tools that we need for, for gardening? Okay, well, I have a shovel here. It's a, it's a pointed shovel, and I'm going to use that to uh, dig up the ground here. And, and you have a rake. I've got a <laughs> You're rake. You're going to use that to rake the soil over the uh, seeds after we put them in. Okay, now we've got a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. We have some peat moss. Mm -hmm. And if uh, students don't have the, uh, uh, all of this equipment, can they get by with a smaller shovel? You could use like a little trowel or whatever. I mean, you, you don't need all this. This is what we happen to have here because this is what we use. Okay, because we're at a nursery and we're expected that's, to have that's all right. this. <laughs> all right. of the trade. Before okay. we came out here, Karen, we were talking about some tomato seeds in outer space that Ooh, someday yeah. are going to come back and we'll have a chance to see what the conditions in space did to those seeds, but we're down here on earth, mm -hmm. and if we wanted to plant some tomatoes in our garden or some marigolds, what would we do? Well, first you take your handy dandy little shovel and put it into the ground and dig up some of the earth. Now this looks real good. This is uh, used to be a cow farm, I think, and uh, so we have really good soil here, but normally you don't have this nice of soil at home, so when you dig um, when you dig up the ground, you're going to have to add this peat moss here. Well, that's because a lot of the soil here in Maryland is clay soil. Right. And right. it's very difficult for the water to percolate down through. And the seeds won't grow as well. So if you don't have good soil like this uh, former cow pasture soil, <laughs> right. I'm not going to ask why that soil is so good, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> well, the fertilizer, guess. the cow manure has helped make this. And of course, we're going to talk about fertilizer today, about how to enrich your soil. So break it up with some peat moss. Yeah, I'm mixing half and half soil and peat moss into this ground. I'm just going to dig a little hole here. The students are wondering where in their backyard or their front yard they should put a garden, Karen. Is it important to look out for the sunny side? The, the sunniest spot that you can put your vegetable garden would be good. Also, don't put it in a place where the water collects. You can tell where it's raining. And um, if water collects in a puddle, that's not a good place for your garden because the seeds will rot there. Okay, so you want good drainage wherever you are. Right, right. Okay. In a sunny spot, away from your... Um, your pets. <laughs> you don't want the pets to dig things up. That's another good point. Okay, so here's a pretty good trench here. Um, All right, so what do we need next? Seeds. All right, let's get some seeds here. Hey, I like these. Has a picture of Garfield the cat on yeah, the front. Yeah, let's see. I guess they'll pro they should work. Garfield's marigolds, dwarf marigolds. All right, now we have the, the after product. Yeah, here's the before. Let me... Let's try to put some seeds in. Okay. 
Now you want to put these seeds in the ground. If you're going to put them in the ground, you have to wait till it's warm. So right around the end of April would be fine. Now this program, um, if it airs at a different time of the year, um, be April or May. April yeah. or May. Okay. When it's warm, because otherwise they just sit on top of the soil. It's too cold for them to do anything. And just sprinkle them. Oh, this. You'll probably be showing them. These are kind of odd-looking seeds. Um, they have sort of like feathers on the end. So There's it's not important that you take them one at a time and just put them in the soil. You can just spread them well, around. Well, what, what I would, pro I, yeah, you can spread them around. If you did them one at a time, it would take forever. Okay, and then after I do that, here's Garfield okay. back. Then I would take some more of this peat moss and sprinkle it lightly over to the top of the, the seeds. You don't want to plant them too deep or they won't, um, they won't come up. Okay, but you do want to cover them so they don't blow away. Right. And so that the birds or other animals uh, wouldn't get them. And, yeah. Okay. Also so they don't dry out. That's a good point. And you don't have to worry about when you just put them down. I mean, the roots will go down and the green will come up. Seeds know what to do when they're in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make a few mistakes. The seeds will tolerate that. Yeah, seeds, seeds are pretty smart. Okay, and they have their own little food source right in there, so they'll... Um, for a while, they'll just grow themselves, but you do have to water them. So after you put the seeds in the ground, make sure you water them well. Okay, that sounds like good advice. Now, if you don't want to start them from seed, you can always go out and buy the marigold already sprouted as this one is. Now, if you brought this home, Karen, uh, how would you ensure that it took root and it, it got even larger? Okay, um, when you take them out of the pot, you just pulled it out like just that. Just pulled it out. Okay. It doesn't care. <laughs> then you just break the root ball up a little bit, mm -hmm. dig a hole and just put it, at least dig the hole as deep as what the pot that you're taking it out of. And then just put soil up around it. And then just water it and it'll, it'll get bigger. I mean, plants just, they just do that. They just know what to do. <laughs> they know what to do. <laughs> All right, so some key points here. Uh, when you plant the seed, make sure you've covered it and you don't plant it too deep. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the soil is warm enough. If it's too cold, it simply is not going to germinate. They'll just sit there. And be careful with your watering. Enough water, but not too much because you don't want that seed to rot. Mm -hmm. And make sure your, your garden is in a sunny place in your garden that has good drainage. You can grow flowers, as Karen has shown. Karen, someone told me once that marigolds are good because they keep insects away from what else you've got. If you smell a marigold, you'll see it has kind of a distinctive odor. And they're, you should plant them around your garden because not only do they look nice, but they'll um, keep some insects away from your other vegetable plants. And a lot of people will plant them around their vegetable gardens to keep insects away. Ah, so marigolds are kind of a natural insect repellent. Right, right. Good Every thing to know. Now, you're not going to eat your marigolds. I know some people eat no. flowers, but I'm not going to recommend you eat no. marigolds. We were talking about tomatoes, about outer space tomato seeds. Now, Karen has given us, this is called a burpee seed and start. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for starting seeds inside. Right. Now, That's, what's the advantage of that, Karen? Um, everything you need is right there. A little pack with soil mm -hmm. and a little pack with tomato seeds. And all you have to do is just put it in a sunny window and, and keep it watered. And the seeds will come right up. And then by the time it if you can put them outside in May, you'll already have them sprouted, and then they'll look like that. Ah, oh, they'll look like this. So you, you transplant them after they've had a chance to grow inside your home. Okay, you can take your little seedlings out of this pack and put them right into the ground when it's warm enough outside. This is some that were grown for a special, the end of um, the spring, so we've mm -hmm. got them in pots, but you would want to grow them in the ground, they'd get a lot bigger. And we know that tomatoes come in a lot of different lot varieties. Of varieties. And here we have uh, big girl and big boy, so we don't slight <laughs> anybody. All different kinds of tomatoes, and this is great. There's nothing like a tomato from your garden that uh, you've grown yourself, mm -hmm. nothing like the ones you bought in the store. So if you get your garden started, put some tomatoes in, guarantee they're going to work if you mm -hmm. follow some of the steps we we'll use today. Karen, let's go have a look at at your greenhouse here oh, good, and okay. look at all the seedlings you've got started. If you're a good gardener, this is what, uh, what it should look like. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> the Howard B. Owen Science Center. Some folks just can't wait to get in. But make no bones about it, the science practice here is not for the faint-hearted. A trip to Owens is to know what the shadow knows. It's the chance to use a microscope and get up close and personal. To 
it through history. To meet creatures who speak with forked tongues. 80,000 students take off on science each year at Owens. Isn't it time that you visit it too? Better hurry though, there's already a crowd and they're all buzzing about the Howard Owen Science Center. Come see for yourself. Karen, we're here in one of your greenhouses down here at Banky's and I don't know where Watson is. You know, I seen him. he wasn't out there helping to dig, which doesn't surprise me. He doesn't <laughs> like hard work, but he's got to be here somewhere. He'll turn up sometime, I guess. Now, we talked about planting seeds outside. We showed you the before and the after when the seeds went in, and also we showed you some of the, the fully grown plants that we transplanted. But in between, this is what you're going to see. Karen, what do you call these trays that we have in front of us? These are, these are growing in plug trays, these plants are. Plug trays. And uh, inside each of these tiny little cubicles is a kind of, oh, look at these. Ah, so each one of these is an individual plant that's come from a seed. that seed. And we call this a seedling. And you see that, as Karen mentioned, the seed knows what to do. The green mm -hmm. part heads toward the sun, and the roots go down in response to gravity. Karen, what's that noise I hear behind me? Oh, what that's our that's our seed machine. Seed machine. This seed is like sewing machine. Space age gardening here. Mm -hmm. So what's coming down into each of those little cubicles? This uh, the seed goes down through those pipes and is mm -hmm. um, forced into each one of those little divisions with soil. Oh, I see. And so then the they germinate and they look like this. Okay, so they germinate, they get the same kinds of conditions that we recommend you have for the seeds that you plant outside, right amount of water. Now seedlings themselves, the seeds themselves don't need light, but the seedlings, the things you're seeing here, do. With the green. Because uh, what is that process called, Karen, where the plants actually make their own food? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, okay. And these green leaves now are taking sunlight, that's why you need a lot of light for your seedlings, and converting it into the food that the plant needs to grow. Now, these, what kind of plants are these, Karen? These are marigolds. Oh, these are the little Garfield seeds yeah, we planted. Right. <laughs> okay. These are the marigolds, the insect repellent plants we talked about, and these must be the uh, tomatoes then, Tomatoes. Right? They don't look much like tomatoes yet, but they will. All right. Someday, a whole salad from what we see in this At can here. <laughs> At least one. At least one. Now, how soon should you transplant your seedlings? Because it's getting pretty crowded in here. It's like mm -hmm. sardines in a can. Yeah. When should you thin them, Karen? Um, these should either come out and go into individual plants pots now mm -hmm. or um, if you were going to grow it in this a while longer you would have to pull out every other one. Oh I see so it, it the roots need a certain amount of room so they can only stay inside these cubicles for a certain amount right, of time. Right but um, also the top needs a certain amount of room too and mm -hmm. so they're just too crowded in this tray. All right, so marigolds and tomatoes are just two of many kinds of seeds you could try. We're recommending these to you because uh, the seeds know what to do and That's you can't right. go too far wrong. And they're easy. They're easy to grow. They're easy. What else do you uh, have coleus, over here? We have those nice coleus. Oh, coleus. Now, these are colored. They look like colored leaves. That's what they are. They get a flower, but generally they're grown because they have such a nice color on their leaf. Hmm. No, you can't eat coleus, can oh, you, no. Karen? <laughs> no, you can't eat them, but they're pretty. <laughs> but I know Watson's interested in things that he can eat. And if you're a, a gardener out there, a, a future farmer of America, and you want to plant a garden and you want to eat some of the things that you're planting, like these tomatoes, what are some other kinds of fruits or vegetables that you could grow, Karen, around here? Easy things. Easy things. Cucumbers. Watermelon. We didn't talk about watermelon. Oh, watermelon. You mm -hmm. mean if... If you take those seeds that you normally spit out <laughs> and put them in the ground, will they grow into oh, watermelon yeah. plants? Yeah, if they All get right. some sun and they get some water. So they'll grow in Maryland. What about uh, green pepper seeds? Green peppers, sure. Green and what about oranges though? Oranges sometimes have seeds. Can you plant those and get an orange tree? Generally those seeds won't sprout because they're sterile. They're sterile. They're yeah. not going to grow and yeah. uh, this is not Florida even though we would like it to be sometimes. Well. The weather is not good enough. So you've gotten some key points to remember here. When your seedling comes up and those first true leaves get out and they, they open, make sure your seedling gets a lot of sunshine. When the thickness increases to the point where it looks like they're all crowding and they want some space, give them their space. Transplant them outside. And keep in mind that the soil has to be the right temperature. 
Warm. <laughs> Warm temperature and don't water them too much. They need a certain amount of water but don't flood them because you can get it's like root rot underneath, mm -hmm. correct? Well, they're not, they don't grow in a swamp. They grow in ground, and you don't want to have too much water sitting That's around them. That's a good them. point. So we're going to have a look now at the larger greenhouse just outside this machine here and see the way they really grow plants for a nursery. And maybe Karen and I and you will find out where Watson's been hiding. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> Karen, thanks for your help today. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep looking. Those tomato seeds have got to be around here somewhere. Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living is the life for me. Spreading out so far and wide Keep Manhattan, just give me that countryside New York is where I'd rather stay I got allergic smelling hay I just adore a penthouse view Darling, I love you, but give me Park Avenue 